crash it through. It's harvesting time in the fields. You might want to pipe down. Got a little spud. Hey guys, and welcome to Jurassic Room. Now let's see if we can't get this done in eight minutes because uh, I don't have much room left on here, so I gotta delete some stuff. But anyway, I made it this video earlier, but it just did not come out that well. I was in a hurry, and I decided to scrap it. It just was not that great. And I guess I forgot a few things, which I'm glad that are in here now. So the first thing in this Jurassic Chat, number 32, yeah. Also, we hit the 600 subscriber marks. Now we got to hit, hit the 700 subscriber marks. That's really cool as well. So the first thing on the list, we will discuss what's happening with James Cromwell. And uh, apparently he's in trouble now because back in April he was, of course, part of a few uh, a small protest at SeaWorld. Now, my personal views on that whole thing are uh, they are shutting down the SeaWorld shows, you know. So uh, I guess that's a good thing. I never really thought it was... You know, as a kid, you think it's cool, but as an, you know, you get older and you think, you know, you, these animals can't go back to the wild, but as as uh, putting them in shows and all that, you know, it's kind of like circuses as well. You feel like, you feel like because they've been around for so long, they, yeah, it's really tough to let them go, but at the same time, you think that you don't really want this being done with the animals. And that's just my personal view on it. I never really uh, thought the idea of having the shows was good. Even though many people have enjoyed them over the years, and it helps uh, bring money to conservation for those animals and for the zoo, the, the marine park itself. But anyway, Cromwell was basically uh, arrested and charged with misdemeanor back in April, and he could be facing up to nine months uh, of jail time or just a big fine. But what he says is, is he would rather take the jail time than the fine. So that's up to him, and if he does, this does happen, uh, he's already done shooting the film Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, so basically what could happen is he's probably going to end up missing, like, uh, you know, the screenings around the world, you know, the premieres, and other than that, nothing much is really going to impact everything. But let's see where it goes, and that, that was all. Now he can be fined up to $400. That's about all it is, or just nine months of jail time, and from his words, he wants to take the jail time. And basically said that he wore a, short, this, this, a shirt that said SeaWorld sucks during one of the shows, and disrupted it. But that's how that's all going. We'll lead on to the second story about the Stegoceratops. Now, Stegoceratops, I did see a small picture of the Stegoceratops, which I'm showing the pictures here. Uh... I'm trying to move to the middle because I, I put the overlays. Anyway. I remember watching the making of Jurassic World and seeing a small picture of Stegoceratops, which made me think that, man, Hasbro was full of crap when they said that they made the Stegoceratops. And, it, and we finally got the whole story of what happened with the Stegoceratops in Jurassic World. So apparently Colin Trevorrow did, does, uh, or, you know, everyone did put mean to put this animal in the movie, and Owen and Claire were supposed to stumble across one. Which, frankly, I think this is a really cool design for a dinosaur. I really liked the toy because it was so cool to me back then, even though uh, I'd still say it's probably one of the better of the toys at Jurassic World. Speaking of toys later on. But, uh... Basically, it's a Stegoceratops cross between Stegosaurus, or, yeah, Stegosaurus and Triceratops. Its horns come out much like that, kind of like a bull, or even a Pseudoceratops, which I'll, I'll put here for a minute. It kind of does look like a Pseudoceratops in a way, but uh, it comes out in, gr in different greens and tans and gray colors, and it's really cool looking to me. I really wish you could have gotten it, but the whole reason it was not in the film was because... Uh, Colin Trevorrow's son actually pointed the fact out that if you have another hybrid in the movie, it kind of takes away the magic of the Indominus being the only hybrid, which I personally, it's, I guess I kind of agree with, but at the same time, it's a herbivorous hybrid and not a carnivorous, so I don't really see how that could take the spotlight away from the Indominus, personally. But uh, we all, along with the Stegoceratops concept art in that story, the uh, artwork uh, guy, hold on, Ian Joyner, who also did other things. He also helped work on the concept art for the Tyrannodons, which I'll show here for a minute.
and uh, also uh, a Panasaurus, which I'll show for uh, a few minutes. Okay, and uh, he did, he helped work with that, and he also helped design uh, some concept art for the Indominus, and it looks truly amazing. I'll move over here. It has many, uh, you know, the yellow and blacks on it. It's got really cool scaling across the eyes and around the shoulders. It's got tons of feathers, way more than the Indominus kind of showed. And it looks very much more like a Giganotosaurus in a way. The feet kind of look the same. The arms kind of look the same. The head, though, very much resembles that of a, a Giganotosaurus. Personally, I think it looks more like a Monolophosaurus in a way, but it really does show that G Giganotosaurus DNA in it. And even though it's a really cool design, I really do prefer the Indominus we got in the film rather than this one. That's just me. It's because this this version shows more of just the Giganotosaurus in a way, but the Indominus in uh, the movie represents uh, the different Abelosaurus and Giganotosaurus and T Rex to me. It shows the Raptor. It shows the Rex and the Giganotosaurus, the Carnotaurus scales. I don't really know where Majungasaurus and Rugops fits in there. Uh, it doesn't really show anything from those two dinosaurs other than the cannibalistic tendencies we've seen in Majungasaurus, so. I don't really know about that, and that's another video that's going to be coming out soon about the whole DNA of the Indominus. But it looks really cool, but I do prefer the one we got in the film better. And next news on some merchandising we found, and now apparently this was out at the same time as that, uh, you know, the snacks and stuff that were uh, shown, and uh, I apparently missed this. It's a bunch of soaps and an electronic toothbrush, which I actually have mine with me for some reason. And I'll probably be getting this one, keeping it in the box, of course, and soaps and different hand washes and all that. And I actually have some soaps and stuff over there on my uh, thing, top shelf, if you can't see it, I got some boxes in here, so uh, got to clean that out. But the last and final thing was today at Mattel, we got some news, hold on, I'm going to find it, that Mattel showed a picture for the upcoming Toy Fair in 2018, the New York Toy Fair, while also showing a uh, tease earlier of, uh, you know, earlier in the week of a uh, wall featuring the electric fence in blue running through the jungle behind it. It's a really cool picture and it's right here for you to see. Looks really awesome. But today they showed a picture of miscellaneous Mattel products, Barbies, little trinkets and all that, some small cars. And in one corner, we see the only thing which seems to be from Jurassic World, and that is a Tyrannosaurus Rex head sculpt. I'm going to have to log out in just a minute, guys, and I'll come back. But it looks so awesome. I think I'm going to go ahead and log out so I can explain, because I'm going to get really hyped. So, uh, I, I've returned. Basically, it looks really great. It looks way better than that Stomp and Strike uh, Tyrannosaurus. The head sculpt is so on par. I would argue... That this is the best toy head sculpt of any Jurassic Park uh, toy we got. That even rivals with this guy, the Thrasher T-Rex. But, however, the only thing is, unlike the Thrasher, it doesn't seem to show much rubber as they said they were going to work on. And all the dinosaurs were supposed to have this. Now, I wonder if they're not going to add, you know, just add the rubber later, like a, add a small layer of it. But other than that, I think the only other problem I have with this is the tongue looks a little long to me, you know, a little out there, but maybe it's going to be like a uh, like a uh, little trigger thing, a little gimmick. Is that like when it opens, it looks like it will have like a snapping kind of uh, gimmick from what it looks like with the jaw here, and maybe that's just a thing, it'll, it'll slam open and shut and the tongue will flicker around and it, it'll like kind of a little action there. But the sculpt is truly amazing. The teeth look so fine. Very much almost like this guy. Uh, but other than that, other than, than the green, I cannot wait to see what the color will be. The skin folds look great. The eye crest. Everything looks great on this head sculpt thus far. And I, I really can't wait. I hope they will add the rubber and everything, though, because it's supposed to be real feel was what they were going to work on with these figures. And here's what Mattel has to say, or Jurassic Outpost has to say about it. Excuse me. All right. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom doesn't release until June of 2018, but the toys will come a little sooner, specifically April 16th, 2018. 
While they have yet to be officially unveiled to the public, we suspect that the Toy Fair in February of 2018 will be the date of this the curtain is formally lifted. Thankfully, the wait was made easier. Mattel officially yet quietly snuck in a first look in the recent article with Fortune. Fortune recently ran an article titled, Can a Tech Makeover Save the Toy Industry? Where they went deep into the behind-the-scenes process of toy making with Mattel. It's well worth the read, so be sure to check it out once you're done with our Jurassic-centric Splinter article. Buried within the article was an image showcasing their prototype creation process, pictured above. And in the mix of prototypes was a clear Jurassic Park Tyrannosaurus Rex head. And here's a closer look here at the uh, head. Uh, right away, the sculpt is clearly Jurassic with a nice attention to detail when it comes to form factor, something recent Hasbro outings lacked. The skull and muscular structure looks dead on. This individual prototype seems to be lacking the finer levels of skin and scale detail, and at this time it remains unclear if the final item will evolve in those regards. While there's room for improvement with the... Uh, if we'll mention fine detail, the sculpt shape is the best the franchise has ever seen. I agree. Especially the teeth, which are surprisingly perfect. We're unsure of what exact Tyrannosaurus Rex toy this represents, or if the prototype was printed in the correct size. But perhaps it's our first look at the Thrash and Throw T-Rex. Mattel currently has an internal showcase for the Jurassic World lineup for license and retail partners. While we can't get a look at the toys themselves, we can see a lot of work went into the display pictured below. <clears throat> which shows uh, blue, and I'll, I'll let it pop up again for a few seconds. We're sure the actual product is on display, just out of sight there. And right here. For more of the Mattel Jurassic World lineup, check out our exclusive scoop article. Though be aware, some details have changed, such as the release date of the Legacy Collection being pushed back, considering this is the first time a company outside of Kenner and Hasbro has handled the Jurassic license for an action figure toy range. We were nervous about what the future would hold, but as this first look shows, we're in good hands with Mattel. And I think we are. Now, uh, the Legacy line, I believe, was supposed to be the figures of older characters, like Alan Grant, and they already uh, they already revealed the uh, Ian Malcolm, which will be coming out, and he will be his own figure, kind of like Cranky Ian up there, my own Cranky Ian, and will hold a small flare. So they're going into really good detail with these figures, apparently. Oh, I gotta make more room, apparently. Now, the head sculpt of the, of the Rex in the picture really looks much like that, compared to Barbie dolls my sisters have, very much like this pen. So that's pretty interesting. So that's a pretty big head that actually almost goes bigger than uh, the Thrasher, and I'll probably have to log out again in a second, guys. I've run out of room again. There's that. What's probably going to happen is they're going to be releasing toys uh, marketing to the current movie, and they will be waiting on the uh, Legacy Collection, which I cannot wait to see the Legacy Collection. That sounds awesome. And hopefully they will all be uh, truly sized comparative to the Kenner toys uh, and maybe Jurassic World toys because uh, I don't know but I think the the main toys I want I would want Mattel to make would be a, another Spinosaurus because Spinosaurus uh, that one toy the uh, not the react attack uh, but the big one the 30 inch one not even 30 inches a little bigger uh, smaller but uh, that's one of the most sought after Jurassic Park toys ever and there are fans of Spinosaurus and I wish Spinosaurus was in this movie uh, but maybe we'll get him in Jurassic World 3, but I don't know, maybe we'll see Spinosaurus in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. That's my personal hope, because I am a big Spinosaurus fan, and I do want to see that dinosaur return. But I think it would be cool that maybe in the Legacy Collection we see the Spinosaurus toy, and have, like, in the first wave, another, you know, the T-Rex and the main dinosaurs, and maybe some special dinosaurs in the second wave or whatnot. And hopefully they will continue making the toys. And not just stop after this movie, <laughs> but just keep making toys into Jurassic World 3, and then even on from there. And c can you imagine the collection of toys that they can make? Selling to us. There's a fly on Caesar. My bearded dragon. But, uh, and another one would be, I want another Indominus toy. But I want it like this, like the scaling right, no color changing gimmick, because... All it basically was was a, a glow light, 
Red, purple, yellow. Didn't even turn in green, I believe. No. Even though that's the only color it changes is camo. Now, what could be cool if they added a color changing gimmick to this? Now, you can do it with that, with the rubber sometimes. You ever had a toy where you touched it or like goo, one of those color changing goos and it changes color as it's moved? Maybe something like that would be a cool gimmick for another Indominus toy. That you touch it and it camouflages. That would be a cool gimmick because it's realistic and uh, I think you can market it as the camo Indominus or something like that. That would be cool. And then it just reverts back to its gray color. That would be a cool figure. Hey, buddy. There you go. But I think that would be a cool gimmick. And the other dinosaurs, I think, I really want some more herbivore toys. I really want them to go all out with their herbivores, because those, we don't really get a ton of herbivores, really. Not, <clears throat> like, over-the-top amount of herbivores, usually just a minimum, because the carnivores are what sell. I really want some herbivore toys. I want a giant Apatosaurus toy, man. I want a big Apatosaurus toy, rubber, real feel. <coughs> Uh, and now, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, why don't we get Brachiosaurus? I want a Patasaurus. A Patasaurus is my favorite dinosaur in Jurassic World. And that's what I want to see. Bendy neck and all and all that. A cool looking try on figure. Like my Jurassic Park 3 one up there. Because that is one of the better toys that came out during Jurassic Park 3. And, uh... Maybe another Stegoceratops toy. Maybe? Uh, I don't know. Because that was kind of more of a thing with Jurassic World. But hey, more hybrids. Maybe we could have Indoraptor. That it really is in the movie. And, of course, Stegoceratops. And Mosasaurus, that was it. I want a Mosasaurus real field toy. And I don't want to have a gimmick like it has to go in water and all that. I just want an actual toy. Now you can make make another maybe with, with like water gimmicks, like a water toy. But I want a real feel Mosasaurus toy with the inner jaws and all that. That sounds so amazing. But that's it guys. What do you think of all this news? I cannot wait. I kind of made a little picture go a long way for a video. But thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for more videos. Hope y'all enjoyed this one. Let's hit that 700 subscriber mark. <laughs>